Right now, my bat enemies can only chase the player around using some basic pathfinding. So today, I thought it'd be fun to update them so they can actually deal damage when they collide with the player. But first, that means we need to add in player health. A wonderful place to start is going to be on the UI. So let's jump in and use Control D to duplicate our levitation progress bar. Quickly rename that to health bar. And then to give us a bit more space in our user interface, we can add eight pixels of separation to our VBox container. Now, I think we need to change the progress bar so they're visually distinct. And I'm going to use the modulate property on both of those nodes. So let's set the health bar to red and the levitation bar to yellow. Then clicking F5, we can run the project to see how it looks in game. And I mixed up the colors of the modulate. So that's the first bug of the day. But luckily, that is an easy one to fix. <laughs> looks like I can ride the bats right now, which could be an interesting mechanic. And it looks like the levitation bar is now the correct color. Now, one of my inspirations for this game is Noita. So let's see how they use their user interface. Okay, it's nice and simple, which is what we're doing here. And it looks like the health bar has a numerical value next to it. And then levitation just has an icon. So I think we can easily replicate something like that with what we currently have. And to do that, I think we need to change our VBox to be a grid container. And we'll need to change the number of columns in the grid to be two. And of course, changing the VBox to be a grid container completely messed up the ordering. But sometimes you have to break an egg to make an omelet. So if I just add in a label here and then adjust some of the ordering of the other sub elements, I think I can get it to look a little bit more like Noita. Now for a nice easy decision, let's go ahead and pick an icon for the texture rack. Just be a placeholder here so we use the kenny assets we're using as our temporary art and oh there are a lot of choices here let's see mm, okay i thought this was going to be easier let me open up noita to see what they used for theirs something okay something that's like pointing upward i mean all right there's an arrow here let me just pick the arrow that should be good because levitation goes up arrow goes up that's a great placeholder. Okay, so I think that looks quite a bit better. Yeah, the colors are harsh and the icons are a bit mismatched to the scale of everything else. But again, this is all placeholder. We're just trying to get the feature implemented. All right, enough UI work for the day. Let's finally dive into coding. And I think a great place to start would be on the signal bus. I'm going to define a new signal called player health changed, which will allow me to connect my player code easily to my user interface. And then anything in the future that needs to be updated when the player health changes can easily hook into this signal. Jumping into the player script, we'll go ahead and define a new function called set current health, which takes in a variable called new health. And then we'll go ahead and set the current health equal to a clamped value between zero and the maximum health. And then we'll simply use signal bus dot player health change dot emit passing in the current health as the variable for whatever needs to be updated will then get that signal to consume it. Jumping over to our UI script here, we can then go ahead and connect the player health change signal to a new method that we'll call on player health change. I know a very creative name, but a very descriptive one nonetheless, because in that method, we'll go ahead and using the percent bar, we can grab the health bar dot value and set that to the new health. And at the same time, we can also go ahead and change the health label dot text to be a string of that new health. Running a quick test to make sure everything is hooked up correctly. Uh, the, the health is still set to 9999, which is the default. Hmm. Ah, there we go. I'm not actually calling set current health when we ready up. So it's just leaving it as the default amount. Let's run the project to see if that fixes it and shoot. Oh man, it should have that, that, that should have done it. I'm calling it here with set current health, passing in the max health value. It's calling the signal and, oh, I see. We're calling ready to connect the signal in the UI component, but the ordering in my main scene is a bit off because UI it technically will run after the player initializes. Like if we just change that quickly, it should fix it. And yep, okay, cool. That was it. So ordering does matter for the ready functions, something to keep in mind in your own projects. Now it's all fun and games to be able to ride these bats like they're a big worm from Dune, but I actually want them to deal damage if they come in contact with the player. Checking out the documentation for the character body 2D, I found this move and collide function, which I think will work perfectly for moving our bats around. And then it looks like it returns a kinematic collision 2D object, which I can then use to grab out the body and check to see if it is a player. If so, we can deal damage. To do this, we'll need to define a new function on the player script called take damage, which will simply update the health using the set current health to be the current health minus the damage amount. 
Running a quick test, we can see, ho oh, oh, I mean, that instantly kills them, but it does it does update the health, which is cool. We might need to put a cooldown into the attack animation. I think because we're calling it in a physics process, every process frame, it's just decrementing the health by 10, which instantly kills us. Hopefully running our final test of the day, we can see that, okay, it, it attacked. Oh yeah, look, there's a little bit of a cooldown. You can see it stops moving and then it'll come up and hopefully chase this again, attack and perfect. Now I know my pathfinding for my enemies is a bit janky and we will revisit that in future devlogs here, but I hope you enjoyed following along this kind of major feature toward getting a win and lose condition to the cave mining portion of my little game here. I'd be interested to see what you think I should add next down below in the comments or join me over in my discord where we can chat about all things game development. I've been Aramis. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.